everybody, I'm Jenny with the Go Box Art Crate and I'm coming to you today to paint a fun Valentine's painting called Love Bugs. I love this one, I love ladybugs and they make a perfect little heart shape and they have, they're sitting on a nice little heart shaped leaf so we're, I'm going to teach you how to go through all of this. Um, this video is made in particular for Fossil Distance Learning Program, but I do like to put it on my YouTube page for everyone to try out. So when I reference things that are in the kit, that's what I'm talking about, the kit that the Fossil Distance Learning kids have. So let's go ahead and zoom in and get started. So I'll, take a, I'll guide you through what we have here and how we're going to do it. So we have four colors, black, white, apple green and bright red. It's kind of fun to just work with four. And our ladybugs, one sort of slightly overlaps the other and then they, they form a heart shape. Now I actually designed this painting about 10 years ago, but I gave it a refresher. So it's it's been redone and uh, it's got a little upgrade and that's what I'm gonna teach you through. So let's have a look at our supplies. We, had, we went through our paint. So if you get the kit, this is what you're going to get. And we do sell this kit on our website, gobox.com. So I've got my blank canvas, little 10 pack of brushes here. This should give us every size we need for this painting. I do have a paper towel to dry my brushes with when I wash them. And when I wash them, you'll want to have a cup of water, some kind of old mug or paper cup, whatever you got laying around there that you can get paint on. So let's go ahead and mix up our first color. I like to, even though these guys are red and black, I like to sketch them in a really pale green because that way, if I have to redraw them, it's really easy to cover up. If I were to sketch them in red, it would be a little bit harder when we start getting the green leaf on there and things could start smearing together and not look so pretty. So I'm gonna show you how I like to do it. Let's take one of these larger brushes so one of these flat large ones that you have, I guess I'll use this flat one. I'm just gonna use this to mix the color. So we wanna scrape off a little white and let's put just a little bit of green in there. You just want a really pale green. You want it to stand out against your white canvas when you sketch, but you don't want it so dark that it would be hard to cover. So just a light minty green like that. And I'll go ahead and set this, well, actually let's just wash it off. I'm gonna use it in a little bit, but I don't want that paint to dry on there. And dry it off with your paper towel. We want to use a smaller brush to sketch things out and then we'll go back to a larger brush for painting everything in. Let's see, I'm gonna pick out, let's just pick out a small round brush. So this one, it has a little number five on it, doesn't matter, just pick one that's about the same size. Just a medium slash small <laughs> round brush. Go ahead and dip it in the water, kind of gently brush it back and forth across the bottom of the cup. And let's dry it off real good. Make sure you get this metal part dry too. You'll occasionally get a little sneaker drop of water on there. Let's take our color we mixed and we're actually gonna draw a heart shape. So imagine there's no ladybug heads here. We're just gonna draw this sort of wide rounded heart. And you have this whole big canvas to work with. So you don't wanna make this little tiny thing. Let's make it nice and big. So let's find the middle of the canvas down here. Let me scoot that up right about there. And I'm gonna come up about four inches or so. Let's just make a dot. Hopefully you can see that on camera. And I'm going to just turn this into a nice wide heart. Keep in mind you can redraw this. I will probably have to. It's kind of hard to get them equal. But they're two different bugs so they don't have to be totally equal. There we go. So about like that, let me lift this up a little bit. I've got a little shadow there. I think it's from my water cup. Let me move that. Okay, I'm gonna wash the brush off. And now I'm gonna dip it in just the plain dark green and we're gonna draw another heart shape. Imagine that, Valentine's Day, we're gonna draw a lot of hearts. So I've got this big heart shaped leaf. This one does come to a point, whereas this one was a little more rounded. And let's just start right up here. Just come from this point here where the two ladybugs meet. Let's come up, make a dot. And now I'm just gonna go around. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
Everything's fixable. Just do the best you can. That's all I do, the best I can. And see how this is gonna come down below where their heads are gonna go later. You can make the leaf bigger if you need to, but just sketch it out to start with. So this is gonna come around and meet down here. Big old heart-shaped leaf. And now you can breathe. <laughs> okay, so now when I look at mine, I can see it's not perfect. Like this side maybe could round out a little more. And th that's what I'll do right now. I'll just kind of adjust things as I look at it. And I think right now it's pretty good. It'll work. So I'm gonna wash this brush off. And we're gonna start by filling in the leaf. Now it's gonna be the solid green here. And what is this called? It's called green apple. Yeah, we're gonna use green apple and we wanna use one of our largest brushes. So I'm just gonna go back to that original brush that we mixed this color with. Go ahead and dip it liberally in this color. You can use a lot here. And we're gonna paint all around our ladybug heart shape. We're just painting the leaf in, so don't paint into the background. If you happen to do that a little bit, it's no big deal. So you can fix just about everything. It's the fun thing about acrylic painting is you can cover up just about everything and I have had so many years of painting with acrylics and I have had to cover a lot of paintings. A lot of painting mistakes and then I've had mistakes that have been ended up being happy mistakes where they end up being, oh you know what, I made a, thought I made a mistake there but that actually ended up being a really cool part of the painting. It's always fun when that happens. So don't worry about uh, anything through here, you know, your ladybug heart, maybe it's kind of lopsided. That's all right. We're gonna paint red in later. We'll have plenty of opportunities to clean that up. And if you need to make this smaller, now's the time to do it. Just kind of shave in with your darker green color. And if you need to reshape your leaf at all, sometimes I use the skinny edge of this brush and just come along the outside edge. There are some plants that grow heart-shaped leaves like this. There's actually a, a type of plant called a string of hearts that has heart-shaped leaves. It's one of those plants that can be kind of difficult to uh, keep alive. <laughs> it's a house plant and a little bit temperamental. It's one of those ones that if you overwater it, it's gonna die. If you underwater it, it's gonna die. You have to find the perfect happy medium, which is really hard to find unless you were blessed with a magical green thumb, which I was not. I can paint. Plants are a little harder. There we go. Now one thing I like to do once I get it covered, I like to just kind of smooth out my brush strokes because as we're going around this shape, sometimes you maybe do choppy little all different direction brush strokes and that works for some paintings. But this particular one, I just kind of want to smooth them out. So and it's kind of satisfying. Nice little satisfying brush stroke here. Just smooth everything out. There we go. Okay, got the leaf done, yay. Finish up yours and we'll get going on the next step. The nice thing about this green and with acrylic paint in general, it dries really fast. Sometimes too fast, sometimes too slow, depending on what you're trying to do. So for the background on this one, I made a light kind of, uh, I guess I would call this like celery green color, maybe. Maybe it's a little lighter than celery, but it's just white and green. That's what I, I did for that. Now, if you want to do a different color, maybe you want to make pink for your background, you can totally do that. Just be careful because you'll have wet green paint, and if it smears in the pink, it's not going to make a real pretty color. It's the reason I chose the light green, because I knew if I smeared the green leaf color in, it's not going to be a big deal because those are the same color base. Let's go ahead and you don't need to wash your brush if you're doing the green. And I'm going to pull aside some white and mix minty green again. Now you can have this a lighter shade like this one 
or you can have it be a little greener. Just make sure it's different than this. We don't really use a lot more green in this painting, so you can use, use as much as you want, I guess. I will show you, um, the next painting I'm teaching is from the same four colors, and it's for another grade group. That's this one. So if you want to do this one as well, it'll be another video you can do on your own. You should have enough paint from your kit to do it. You'll just need to find a painting surface, use a piece of cardboard, or uh, something that you have that you can paint over. A rock. You have to find a nice, <laughs> good size rock. But I have painted on rocks before. It's kind of fun. Alright, let's paint this background in. Notice my brush strokes. I kind of try to keep them long, smoothed out. Some backgrounds we might do a choppier background. I think our birds, the birds have a really choppy background, so I'll be doing a lot of short choppy brush strokes. But this one I gave it pretty much a smooth color base. So my brush strokes are long. And then as you get close to the leaf, you can turn your brush and use that skinny edge to get around these small, sharp areas. I actually really like this color a lot. I, my laundry room is in this color, but sometimes when I walk in there, I feel like it's almost too green. Like all the walls are green. I think I need to paint over another one so it's not all green, because then I start feeling green and my clothes start looking green. <laughs> all those colors reflecting against each other. Now you can paint the edges, like the sides of your canvas, but you'll probably want to wait until the video's over, that way you can stay nice and caught up, unless you're a real fast painter. I need to mix more color, you might have to as well. What I do to make the same color is, well you've got your pool of color on there already that you can usually see, so you can kind of get it pretty close. But another thing I'll do is I'll hold my brush up to this paint that's already on the canvas and be like, oh yeah, it blends in, okay good, I've got close enough to the same color. I think I'll have just enough of this light green to finish this background. And the coverage is really good with this particular brand of paint. So I like it. Using the thin edge of that brush to get up and around here. So you'll just want to be careful around your leaf, but you can be you can be less careful outside of that. There, and we do outline our leaf later on. You can see it gets a little black outline. Let's wash the brush. I'm actually going to go through and uh, I'll give my leaf another coat of this just because I can see some streaky areas. And you don't even need to coat the whole thing, just if you've got some thin spots, just hit them up with a second coat. If you're running, um, falling behind a little bit, you can always do this later. And maybe you already got a nice solid coat on here so you don't need another. Now if you find that the paint that you're painting on right now is not sticking, that happens when this is too wet and you're trying to put a second coat on top of paint that's still too wet. So you'll just want to let it dry a bit, work on something else, plan on going back if needed. This what I'm doing right now is totally optional. I just saw some thin spots and I thought, yeah, let's get another coat of paint here and there. That works. All 
Okay, washing the brush. Now we get to have some fun. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same brush or the other one. You've got this other one that has the rounded edges. We're gonna, I just use the flat one and we're going to paint this with solid red. So I like to start in the middle so that these edges can dry just a little bit more. Again, the nice long brush strokes are good here. Such a pretty contrast of colors. I love the green and red together. This could become all kinds of different paintings at this point. But we're gonna turn it into bugs. So this is where you wanna be careful, right around the edges. You can always utilize this thin edge of the brush, see what I'm doing right now? Just going kinda of slow. Or you can pick up one of your smaller brushes if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. You've got all these to work with. You know, we, we don't use all of these for this painting, but if you feel like you wanna use a different brush size for any part of this painting, I want you to use what feels comfortable in your hands because what feels comfortable to you might be different for me or someone else so it's all just kind of your own thing so you'll notice where the red overlaps the green it turns slightly darker which is kind of cool if you look now it almost looks like I have an outline but I didn't actually do an outline a little fun color trick. Just smoothing out my brush strokes before I get in around the edges. Such a bold color. Now these get outlined in black too, you can see that here. So don't worry about any little mess ups around the edges. Your outline will probably fix that in most cases. Okay, I've got a fun little abstract valentine <laughs> right now. So I wanna wash the brush off really good. I don't know if we're gonna use this one again. I think we're, think we're done with this one unless you need to go back and put a, another coat of paint on your green leaf. Dry that off. This one can rest. All right. So next, I think a good thing for us to do while we wait for all of this to dry will be to put these little white dots in the background. Now you can do something else. You could do tiny little hearts like this one has. So you could do those in any color. Um, you could do little spirals. You can do uh, snowflakes, why not? You can do whatever you want. I'll show you how to do the dots though. This is a good thing for us to do while this all dries. Um, but if you're gonna do the dots, you'll wanna pick up one of your tiniest brushes. So I've got this little one that has a two slash zero on it. It's a perfect size. We don't use the brush end for this. We actually use the handle end. We're gonna use it like a rubber stamp. So you're just gonna dot it in your white paint and then just put little dots all over. So this is not snow or stars in this painting. Um, this is kind of more of a, this painting has a very spring feel to me because of the colors and the, the vivid green leaf. So I think of these as being like those little things that blow around that make you sneeze. <laughs> cottonwood from the cottonwood trees, or this could be uh, someone nearby blew one of those big dandelion puffs. 
And you've got little wish flower puffs blowing everywhere. It's just kind of fun and it turns our background into being something a little more interesting. So when I've taught uh, school age kids in the past, I really like to let them do their own thing. So feel free to do something different here. They don't show up super great on camera. In person, I can really see them, but I think the camera maybe wash, will wash out the color a little tiny bit. This is a really light color, so putting white on top of it <laughs> makes it even lighter <laughs> or less noticeable. Now you can put as many of these as you want. One of the things I like to do is try to break up a pattern if I have like every single one exactly spaced apart like it's a polka dot pattern. I like to think of it being a little more random so I'll come in and cluster a few dots together and then move along and do some more that way. This is true for when you paint stars especially because if you look up in the night sky you all know that they're they're not equally spaced apart and some are larger and brighter than others. So this is this technique I'm doing is what we use in a lot of our painting classes to do stars. I always will tell the painters that. Make sure you make it random. Paint the Big Dipper. You can see my red is starting to dry. It's still shiny, which mean there, means there's some wet spots. I can tell this green leaf is almost 100% dry though. Okay. That's probably good enough. I think I went a little overkill. Like this one doesn't have quite as many. This one, I went a little crazy. So one thing we want to do for sure, before you set your brush down, you want to wipe the handle off because if you don't, this is going to dry in a big glob. And if you ever try to use it the same way again for maybe a starry sky, you'd end up with a giant glob that's going to make all of these not look so hot. So always wipe that handle off. And now I think what I will have us do now is outline the leaf. Let's have a look here. We'll outline the leaf and then we'll add the stem and some of these little veins. Color wise, what did I do? I made kind of a, a grayish color and but I didn't actually use black and white. I think I have to remember I didn't take notes. Let's um, let's pick up just a medium sized brush one of your maybe flat mediums. And let's mix green, plop it down somewhere. Let's mix a little black into it. And the tiniest little dot of red. Oops, I said tiny and I put a glob in. So this made kind of a purpley brown color, which would be fine. If you want it more gray, just put some more green in there. Grayish brown is kind of what it makes. And now I want to trace the leaf. Now you can use the thin edge of one of these little flat brushes like this. That works great. Or if you feel more comfortable using a small round pointy brush, then do that. Just go with whatever you think you'll do best with. I'm going to take and I'm going to add a drop of water to this. Just one drop. Just, I just dipped my brush in the water and stirred that in here. That's going to make this nice and fluid, which is ideal for tracing. So I'm using the thin edge of this brush. Honestly, just use whatever feels good to you. I'm not pushing very hard. Tracing is, <laughs> eh. <laughs> I need to stop laughing. Tracing is not easy. And especially if your hand is shaking, I think maybe I had too much caffeine or something. I got a little shaky. There, <laughs> one side done. It doesn't look super great. Lay off the coffee. Sometimes what I'll do is flip my canvas around different directions. I find it's a little easier to pull towards me than it is to paint up, but everybody's different. And if you need to refresh your paint with a little tiny bit of water, just do a little bit at a time. Sometimes for me, it's easier if I go faster because then I don't have time to think about, oh, my hand is shaking. 
Oh, why did I drink so much coffee? No, I just go quick and then I less less thought involved. There. That's all right. It'll do. It's outlined. <laughs> okay, so we've got this big vein that goes through the center of this leaf and it goes off the top of the canvas. This is the stem. So we're going to start at the bottom. You can use, you know, I'll, I'll switch. I'll switch to one of my little round pointies. What's this one? Number one, I'm gonna get it wet, dry, just kind of blot it dry here. And I'll take this and go dividing the heart leaf with a vein. And then I'm gonna go off the top. It can kind of curve and wobble a little bit. So if you look at like veins on leaves, they're never totally straight, which is thankfully. <laughs> thankfully for the painter. And then uh, the stem, I always just kind of like to curve a little bit. And it's a little bit thicker because it's got to support the weight of that leaf. And if you feel like you'd rather have a green stem, I know it's like so late. I should have said that a minute ago. One thing you could do, let this dry and then come back with your little brush and a bit of green and just leave the, just put a little green like highlight on it. So then it's outlined in the darker color and you've got the green in the middle. And then I've got just the suggestion of some other veins here. So you'll want to use your little, probably a little pointy brush, just like I am right now. I'm going to refresh my paint with a tiny bit of water. And just from this, I'm just going to flick. And you can branch off of these. There. A little more... A little more veiny looking than that one. And then this one, I just kind of figured they'd go like with the direction of the heart. If you don't like the look of this, you don't have to do it. I won't tell anyone. There. <laughs> fun, fun. How are we doing, ladybugs? Well, there's a little bit of wet paint, but not too much. We can work with it. We're gonna start incorporating some black now. And uh, get our ladybug heads drawn, and then their bodies. Bodies are a little more detailed. Heads are just circles. So I have one that, this one here kind of overlaps that one. It's like, get off this leaf, it's mine. <laughs> I want to pick a little round pointy brush, uh, medium, medium to small is fine for drawing the heads. And let's dip it in the black. This part's pretty easy. So let's go ahead first in, I'm just thinking here, a way to make it the easiest for you. Let's, let's divide this heart. So you see here, this black line comes in like that. And then let's just do that. Let's outline this guy right here first, and then we'll work on that one. So the easiest way to do this is to come down here and just con like act like this is continuing. It's going to make kind of a, a raindrop shape. Ah. My hands are just a little shaky today. It's Saturday right now. I think my body wants to be home on the couch. <laughs> so you can use this little pointy brush. I had a little bit better luck with this flat one using the thin edge. I might switch back to it. I'll just set this one down and keep it nearby. I'm not gonna wash it quite yet because I'm gonna use it in a minute. So up and around. Again, if it's easier to go a little quicker and also, Turn your canvas, pull down towards yourself if that's easier. I find that's easier, like I mentioned earlier. There. Just gonna go over this again. And then this side, we're just gonna go around. And meet up. 
Then we'll paint ladybug heads on there in a minute. Okay. All right, I want to paint the heads in with this little brush. I've already got black on it. I'll just add a little bit more. And first what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little half circle like that. So uh, you're not actually drawing a full round circle quite yet, but we're going to do that in a second. And then this one too, same thing. So it's almost like we're starting to make another heart shape. We should just count how many heart shapes we have in here. That looks funny. And so we're going to turn this now into a circle like this. So it's going to go down onto the leaf. And you can fill that in. It might make this next part make a little more sense. So just solid black. And now this one has a little tiny head. We need to fix that. Let's have a look at that original again. There. So draw this one into a circle. It just meets up with that one. And fill it in. They can be the same size. Mine ended up being pretty close to the same size. Or if you want to make this one in front a little bit bigger, that's fine too. I just flicked a little fleck of black on here. Usually when that happens, you'll probably have it happen too. You can see it there. I'll leave it, let it dry, and then I can touch it up with some green. Because if I tried to wipe it off now, I'd get a big smear of black, which would not be fun to fix. <laughs> okay, now we've got our ladybug bodies and heads. Now we're going to design their wings. So we draw a line that kind of goes off. And look, we've got another heart here. Gosh, there's a lot more than I thought. So this time I'm gonna go, just draw a line that divides from the head down to the end of the ladybug. I'm just using one of my little pointy brushes in black. And you can add a drop of water to your paint. It does help. I'm not pushing very hard. The harder you push, the thicker your outlines will be. Sometimes we want that, like the ladybug outline and the leaf outline are pretty thick. And sometimes you might want a smaller outline. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to curve off like that so I get this kind of funky triangle shape. And then I end up with a heart shape. And there we go. And now I've got this to fill in with black, which I'll probably use one of my medium flat brushes for. And you just paint right over that line. Now your ladybug might have larger wings. These are, these are the wings. Well, actually these are, uh, if you look at a ladybug, I think their wings are underneath. I haven't put a lot of thought into that. But yes, I think that these fold out of the way and their wings are underneath. It's kind of crazy. Our world is really interesting. So there, and you can kind of just edge in here if you need to try to make them look more even. But I mean, it's a painting of a ladybug. It's just make it as even as you can. We'll save the, the perfect details for photographers. So you can see my wings on this one are a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit wider, or the, the body part's a little wider than it was here. And now let's, let's do this one, same treatment. So divide from the head to the back of the body with the line. And then this can curve off. So you end up with that little funky triangle shape. Same thing here. We'll fill that in with black. Go right over your dividing line. Thank goodness black covers very well. <laughs> we don't have to do second coats here. Oh, that's so cute. 
once they get faces, they'll be so much more cute. So now we get to have some fun. Let's wash our brush. Now we really need those heads to dry because we're going to put white eyes on there in a minute. I'm going to actually use a clean dry brush and just sort of push any thick spots of paint around to flatten it out because that's going to let it dry a little bit faster. So if you've got thick globby paint on your ladybug head, it's going to dry quite a bit slower so that I'm just eliminating that by spreading it out a bit. Now dry! <laughs> Sometimes I actually use a hair dryer, but it's all the way across the room and it's kind of noisy, so I'm not going to do that to you guys. Okay, polka dots. These are fun. You can do them a larger size. These are, gosh, I don't know, they're not quite the diameter of like a penny, and they're not quite the diameter of a pencil eraser. They're somewhere in the middle. And I did them all with the small brush, and you can put as many as you like. You can look up a ladybug online if you try to, if you want to try to make it accurate. But you know, we don't have to do that. We're just painting here. We're painting cute, cartoony ladybugs, and we can do whatever we want. So I am just gonna do some little dots and see how I just swirl my brush around. I first I'll draw a circle and then just fill it in. If you need to make like a half dot, like maybe this wraps around the side of the body and we're only seeing half of it, you can do that. It looks kind of nice. Yeah, let's see here. They probably in nature, these probably match exactly. Like if there's one here, there's going to be one here. If there's one here, there's going to be one here. But honestly, like I said, this is a painting. It's not a photograph. You can do what you want. We're just having fun. And I say that, and then I'm doing them all exact. Oops, I need to take my own advice. There. So I have like four on each ladybug body side. Um, you can do three. You can do six. You can do a hundred. Ladybugs are supposed to be lucky. So if they land on you, it's good luck, supposedly. So don't crush them. <laughs> if they land on you, don't crush them. They're just trying to bring you some good luck. So I don't have a lot of room to do this one. I could maybe put like a shred of it, like a little half circle, but I think where it's located, it's going to join with this half circle. It might look kind of funny. I'm going to do, how about I'll do this? I'll do one right in the middle. Throw off the laws of nature. <laughs> they look cute even without their faces. How about that? Oh, I smeared my them. I, a lot of times when I'm painting, I'll drag part of my hand across the canvas. You can see I actually s did this with stars. I laid my hand on the canvas. So what I'm going to do while you guys are finishing up that, I'll touch this up with, a, I have a little bit of that light green left. And look at that. And then I was showing you earlier about how you can do the stem in green. I'll just do that. I'm waiting for some parts to dry anyways. So... I have a lot of paint left here. I'll just do some green right up the center. This is if you're a, a one who wants the stem green. Now, if you wanted to do um, little legs <laughs> sticking out, you could do that. I don't have it on this. I just kind of figure their legs are tucked underneath. But I think right now what I'll probably have us do while we're waiting for these heads to dry is we're going to, let's paint some white highlights on the leaf itself. So the ladybug, the, all the dots are still too wet. So you can see I had that problem too when I painted 
this originally, so I just kept the, the white highlights in the red part. But you can always wait till this is completely dry and then do the highlights. But that leaf is nice and dry, so let's, let's get some highlights on there. I'm gonna pick one of my medium flat brushes. This is number four. Just pick one that's about this size, about a quarter inch wide, flat, or round if all you have is round. I'm gonna dip it in white. And I'll use the thin edge of this brush and do just a little white highlight down the side here. What we're doing now is just gonna make the leaf look nice and glossy. I'll do one down here too. Over here, why not? Do one here. And then if you've got space and you want to put a little highlight on the, the red part of the body, the black dots, if you put a highlight through it, they're going to smear and turn everything weird and gray. So I would avoid that. I'm just putting, if you notice, I'm just putting it in the red areas. I could probably fit some here. Cute. Highlights really change things up in a very nice way. Okay, I think <laughs> the head is still wet, but I think it's okay enough for me to paint the eyes. We'll see. We'll attempt. So let's pick a small brush. And I just have the antenna are, they could be black. You could do them in black if you want, but I did them in pink. And then I did their mouths in pink, but their eyes are white with a black center. So let's do, I'm just thinking here based on the, how wet that is. Let's do the white eyes, because if, if they turn kind of gray, you can always just let them dry and go back and give them a second coat of white, and they'll, they'll turn white. I know that's what happened with this one, because I remember it, painting at my kitchen counter, being like, oh, this will be interesting when I teach it live. <laughs> or, or recorded. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, let's take a small pointy brush, dip it in white, and then I have the eyes down on the lower part of the face. I think it looks cute that way. Let's have a look. See how they, like they have giant foreheads, <laughs> but their their eyes are down lower. And I'll just do a little one right here. You can make gigantic eyes if you want. They'll be so cute either way. And yeah, they're turning slightly gray just because of the wet black paint underneath and then this one here this one doesn't have a lot of room for for eyes <laughs> i'd really squeeze this one in here and we'll let those dry and then you can go back, because it might take a little while, you can go back after this is over and do another coat of white on the eyes, let it dry, and then go back with the black dots. Or you can just blow really hard. <laughs> Let's draw the antenna and mouth now. So, oops, just flicked some water. Uh, let's make pink. So white and red are your two colors that will make it pretty pink, and you can make it more on the red side, or you can make it more uh, pale pastel pink. It's up to you. Let's add a drop of water to that, maybe a couple drops. Now the antenna I did just kind of fun. Uh, I did just a little swoop, curly cue. Other ways I've done it, I've used the handle and done little dots that go in that same thing. You could do a little black uh, antenna, like you could do something like this with a little ball on the end. Here, I'll do another one. There's two antenna. But I just uh, did some curly Q thing. I just went up and curled under. I'm not pushing very hard. I'm trying to avoid the wet black paint. It's a little bit of a challenge. And then this one over here. By keeping your pressure really light, too, if you do have some wet blank wet black paint, it uh, will be a little bit less likely to smear because you're not putting that pressure and forcing it to smear. And then I can do a cute little pink mouth. Let's 
Oh, they're so cute. And then finally, the black eyes. So this is where you can make them look at each other by putting the black dots, both of them facing that way and both of them facing that way. Now, normally, yes, I would, I would go back and paint white back over these eyes, which turned kind of gray, you can see. It almost already looks like they have eyeballs, but they don't. It's just the, the black mixed with the white. So I'll just take, you can use the handle of your brush if that feels easier, but I'll just take, uh, shaky hand, I'll just take a little black and dot it over here and same here. So they're looking at each other. And that is the end. That's all we do unless you want to go back and do anything else. But we do need to sign it. I forgot to sign my first one. I'm going to use the pink because it's nice and fresh and I just mixed it and it's a good color to use for signing. And I just paint my initials. One thing I try to do is keep my signature on the smaller side because the painting is more about the ladybugs. Um, your signature just needs to be small. I've seen sometimes kids will paint their whole huge name across the bottom of the canvas, and although it's cute, you might not like it later. You might want to see the ladybugs. <laughs> so it is your painting, though, so do what you want to do. But I hope you enjoy it. I hope that you guys had fun. And I had a lot of fun painting this painting, and I had a lot of fun designing it. If you want to do the bird one, it's called, I think it's just called... Lovebirds. I can't remember. I can't remember what we called it. It's going to be next. <laughs> so you can uh, you can paint that one along as well. Use whatever you got in the house that you can paint over with permission. Uh, cardboard, whatever you want. Wood. Sometimes I've done that in the past too. But anyway, I hope you guys had fun. I had a lot of fun and we will see you next time. Bye.